So for this question, we're asked to determine support reactions at A, C, and E on the compound beam, and it's pin connected at B and D. So we're going to need to analyze this um, by disconnecting at each of the pins um, and replacing those connections with the equivalent um, and opposite forces on either part. So I'm going to start by drawing each of the three free body diagrams from uh, looking at each of the three different parts that make up the beam. So let's start with looking at the part AB. So pulling it out on its own. So forces that we're going to have acting on it, we're going to have the 9 kilonewtons externally applied. We're going to have some support reactions that we need to replace at A. And we can see that this is going to be a fixed joint. So that means that we're going to have a horizontal, a vertical, and a moment reaction. So let's draw those in. And at the moment, I'm just guessing at directions. And let's assume this one is going this way for MA. So the other thing that we need to do is replace what's going on at the end here at B. It's a pin joint, so we're going to have a horizontal and a vertical component of force at that point. Again, I'm going to make a guess at what directions. So let's assume this is BX, and I'll assume this is BY. Okay. So that's the first free body diagram. So I'm going to move on and separate um, out the components uh, BD. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is apply the external moment that's on my system. So that's this one here. And it's going to be, oh, maybe I'll write it above it, 10 kilonewton meters. I also know that I'm going to have a force onto my beam as a result of this roller support at C. And we know that rollers only react in the one direction, which is vertically in this case. Um, so I'm going to draw it upwards and I'm going to call this CY. Okay. I'm also going to have to replace the disc, uh, where we disconnect at the pins with forces. So we know at this point here on the end, at point B, this beam is connected to this beam. So we need to have equal and opposite forces on the two different bodies. So we've decided that this one's going to the left. That means that this one needs to go to the right. And if we've drawn this one upwards, we need to draw this one downwards for them to have equal and opposite forces as per Newton's second law. Ah, oh, sorry, third law. So the other one that we're going to have to disconnect at is D. And again, we can make some guesses on what direction things are going to go. So I'm going to guess that this one goes this way, and I'm going to call it DX. And I'm going to guess that we have a vertical component that's going, I don't know, let's guess upwards. Okay. So then we move on to the last free body diagram that we need to draw. And this is going to be of this part in here, which is DE. So again, we can put the externally applied stuff on quite easily. So we're going to have a 10 kilonewton force acting downwards. We know that we are supported over here at point E. And it's a roller joint, so it's only going to have the one component of force. And I'm calling out EY. And we've also had to disconnect at the pin, which is the same as point D here, point D here. So we need equal and opposite forces between those two different components. So if we've drawn DX to the left, we need to draw it on the other one back to the right. And if we've drawn DY up, here it needs to be drawn downwards. Okay, so I think that's our complete free body diagrams. It now just becomes a case of needing to solve for everything on them. Okay. So I think the best starting point um, is probably to look over here on this free body diagram because it only has three unknowns. And we have three equations of equilibrium that we can apply in order to work out those three unknowns. If we start on one of these other ones, we have far too many unknowns to be able to work anything out. So working over this here on this one, if we sum forces in the x direction to be 0, we're going to find that dx equals 0. So that's a pretty easy start. And we can go back and label it everywhere that we see our variable dx. 
So in order to work out these other ones um, and prevent doing simultaneous equations, I think the easiest way is to sum moments, and I'm going to decide just to sum here at point D. Okay. So summing at D, we have to have 0. So dx and dy act through the point, so they're not going to contribute. We do have a 10 kilonewton force, though, which needs to be multiplied by the distance in here. And if we scroll back up, we can see that everything is separated by 1.5 meters in here. All right, so this distance, or the moment arm, is going to be 1.5. This is going to try and rotate us clockwise, so it's negative. We then have EY. It's going to be multiplied by the full length in here, which is 3 meters. And it's going to rotate us anti-clockwise, so it's been put in here as positive. So working this out, EY becomes 5 kilonewtons. And again, we can label this on the diagram over here. All right, so... We now need to work out what dy actually is, and we can get that by summing in the y direction most easily. So in the y direction, we've got negative dy, we've got negative 10, and we've got positive 5. So I think this is going to come out being a negative value, which means that I've actually drawn it the wrong way. Okay, so this has come out to negative 5 newton, kilonewtons. So what I need to do is go back and change the direction of dy everywhere it appears. So here, it's actually going upward. And over here, it's actually going downwards. In both cases, it's going to be 5. Okay. So that pretty much concludes everything on this um, free body diagram on the right-hand side. So what it's meant, though, is because we've worked out these reactions at D and they appear on our next free body diagram, we've actually got to the point where we only have three unknowns on this diagram and we're now going to be able to solve it. So I'm going to start this time by, I think, again, summing my moments about B. Because if I sum about this point here, which is B, I should be able to determine what CY actually is. So at point B, we have Bx and By acting through, so they're not going to contribute to the equation. The next one I'll consider is Cy. And we said before all of these things are separated by 1.5 meters in here, so the moment arm will be 1.5. We then need to put in the direction, so this is going to try and rotate anti-clockwise, so it's going to be positive. We've then got this 10 kilonewton meter couple moment, and it's drawn in the clockwise direction, so it's going to go in as negative. And remember, it doesn't need to be multiplied by a distance because it's already a moment. Okay. Um, the final one we need to consider is the 5 kilonewtons on the end. It's at a distance of 3 meters, and this is going to try and make this thing rotate clockwise, so it's going to be negative. So we should be able to work out Cy, and it becomes 16. 0.67 kilonewtons. Okay, again we can go back and label it on our free body diagram. This one only appears once. Okay, so next we can try and work out what Bx and By actually are. So I'll start with summing forces in the x direction and we're going to find that Bx, oh, the only other thing we have was dx but it came out to be zero, so Bx is going to have to be zero as well. So we can go and label it everywhere it appears. So the other equation is summing forces in the y direction to be equal to zero. So we've currently got by going down. We've got 16.67 going up. And we have 5 kilonewtons going down. So I think this is going to come out to be negative as well, which tells me I have the incorrect direction. Sorry, I lied, it came out positive. <laughs> 11.67 kilonewtons. So if it came out positive, which it did, that means directions were correct on the diagram. So here it is indeed going down, and it's 11.67 kilonewtons. Here it's going to be going up equal and opposite. Okay. 
So now we've worked out everything there was to find on this second free body diagram. So I'm going to move backwards um, to this first one that we drew because now again, because we had things um, crossing over between the two different points, um, we're going to have um, a case where we can now solve for just three unknowns that we've got left on the diagram. So I'll start with summing forces in the x direction, I think, on this one. So I'm going to have ax having to equal zero because there's nothing in the x direction, um, everything zero. I'll now sum in the y direction. So going up, we have ay. We have 9 going down, and we have 11.67 going up. So when we solve for this, in fact, ay comes out to be a negative value, which means that I did get the direction wrong on the diagram. Okay, so this is actually going downwards. Ay doesn't appear anywhere else, so I don't need to fix it there. And we know it's equal to 2.67. And the final thing I need to determine is my moment here at the fixed joint. So I can get this by summing moments at any point on the diagram. I think I'm just going to go with A though. So AX and AY act through the points. They don't appear. I've currently drawn my moment reaction to be in the clockwise direction. So that means it's negative. I've then got this 9 kilonewtons acting at the distance of 1.5 and it's going to be rotating in the clockwise direction so it's negative and I've got this 11.67 acting at a distance of the full length of the beam which is 3 meters and it's going to try and rotate it anti-clockwise so it's positive. So if we solve for this we can find MA and in fact it comes out to be 21.5 uh, 51 kilonewton meters and it came out positive so that means it was the correct direction of the diagram so I think I've run out of space but this one is 21.51 kilonewton meters okay so if we scroll back up we were asked to determine support reactions at A, C and E so if we look at our solution as it stands we found the horizontal reaction at A and the vertical reaction at A. We have found the reaction as well. We have got the support reaction that we have at C, it was a roller joint. And we have also got the support reaction that we saw at E, which was also a roller joint. So they are the answers that we were looking for for this question. So that is all there is and see you in another video.